Ah, oh, shit. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by our patrons. To find out more, visit patreon.com slash bottle rocket gaming. Hey guys, welcome to a special episode of the BRG Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Warp Jester, and as always, to my left, always cold, always watching out for the polar bears coming south. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it's me, Kirok. Hi, guys. How you doing, Kirok? Good, thank you. Well, that's a good thing. So uh, tonight's going to be a special episode because we're actually going to do something a little different. It's something we do every, well... Gonna start start doing it every year because this is our second year doing it. Um, we actually have some guests on with us tonight, which is gonna be Linz. You know her, you love her. Hello. Hey, Linz. She's been around for a couple episodes here and there, and we brought back Zez, who mm-hmm. we've had on before. Yep. Hello. And they're gonna help us out with this year's 2018 predictions episode. Yay! <laughs> So this this is the opportunity for us to show you just at how bad we are at predicting the future. So <laughs> look forward look forward to the shenanigans tonight because I guarantee you it's gonna get ugly. Anyways, guys, I can say let's let's go ahead and uh, get ourselves set up and we will dive right into it. Alrighty, guys, so we're gonna get into this now for our prediction show. Here's how it's gonna work. They are. Two different predictions each person is going to get. The first half of the show, we're going to do kind of our, our likely, our, our safe-ish predictions. Um, they were kind of shooting for, this is likely going to happen. And then for the second half of the show, we're going to do kind of our, our stretch predictions. Our I won't say what we, we hope for, but it's things that are semi unlikely but still plausible, so to speak. And to make things more interesting... Um, we're also going to have people chime in. So for every prediction somebody makes, the others will have the option to agree, disagree, or abstain. Mm-hmm. And this is all going to this is all going to tie into when we do the review at the end of the year. We'll have a point system, and we'll rank how people did via points, like we did with the uh, 2017 predictions. If you didn't see that episode, make sure you go back and watch that one because it's kind of fucking funny. <laughs> all right. So that said, we're going to dive into this now. Um, again, this is going to be our, our more likely predictions, and we're going to go ahead and do kind of a random roll here, and it's going to be Kirok going first. Me going first? Yes. All right, I have it written down. I have it written down. <laughs> more Fallout VR. More no, Fallout no. VR. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay, so for my first likely prediction, um, Microsoft will unveil their own VR headset for Xbox One X. Uh, And this will be in time for the holidays, so it'll be around holiday time this time next year. And it will be their own design, not a third party, okay? So it'll be an Xbox-branded headset, and it'll retail for $239 US. I'm being very specific. I'm going to get these right. I'm going to get these right. And um, the headset will be only the headset, no special controllers, no special anything. It'll be wires to connect it to the system, and that's about it. It's self-contained, so yeah. no lighthouses or anything like that. That is my so, life so, prediction. So be very clear. You you are spiking this very definitively right on the zero-yard line, saying the price, the peripherals, uh-huh. the details, the dates – and well, and to be very clear, you're saying it's going to be inside frame. head holiday, tracking. Holiday, it's going to be inside head tracking. Yes, inside out head. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, I am. I am totally not on board with this. <laughs> no, nope. because you are way too fucking specific. And how am I going to fucking score this coming into the year when you get like one out of two or one out of four of these things correct or two out of four? You never know. They did yeah. say it in an E3. They did say it in one of the E3s when they revealed Scorpio. They talked about VR for it. However, I... however, I'm still going with this prediction because afterwards, recently, they said they didn't say anything about VR. So they might be holding off for a while. But I think that I it's going to be... I, you know why? Because they just let out their Xbox One X. It's November of 2017, right? So... Oh. What are they going to do? Release a whole new console? They need something that's going to be big so that people will go now, to yeah. it. 
my, my, I, I understand. My issue with that is um, the fact that you said it would be for the Xbox One X and not yes. for the Xbox from Xbox One family. That's where it gets me. That's where I think it goes south at. Uh, okay. I don't think that one's going to support it, to be honest. That, that's exactly why I didn't include the Xbox but One. I, but I don't think that Microsoft wants to split up their, the uh, you know, their family because uh, the whole push behind having the Xbox consoles is that you can play any game on any of them. So I think they would treat VR the same way. Any uh, game on any point, but having running a VR unit is a whole another effing story. I here here's the thing. Like I said, I'm not on, I'm I'm going with a big fat no on this because yeah, there's yeah. there's no way you're hitting all these Lynn points. Said no, if I know. You hit all these points. I will give you a three X bonus on points <laughs> for your. <laughs> hey, this is this now, is being recorded. Okay? Right. I will be, uh, yeah, I'll agree to that. So that's a yeah. no. That's a no from everyone, yeah. right? Yeah. Three, three points for that. <laughs> no, no, no. I will personally mail you a wheelbarrow to cart your balls around. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my likely prediction. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm a no for all of it. I. I don't think they're going to release in 2018 at all. Okay. All right. All right. So we've got no's all around the board and Kirox. Yeah, whipping it out and waving it around. <laughs> so, more power to you, man. Thank you. All right. Next up on the list, we're going to go ahead and do Zez. Mine's nowhere near that crazy. Uh, <laughs> Wait till I tell you my next one. <laughs> oh, God. Mine is, uh, I think, next year EA will announce a mobile Star Wars game outside of Galaxy of Heroes. Say what? Say it again. EA, EA will announce a mobile Star Wars game outside of Galaxy of Heroes. Oh, okay. So they'll have Galaxy of Heroes and this other game. This other Star Wars game. It's other Star, it's Star Wars branded. Yes. Now, I, if they do that, would this be the first new content that will be struck with Disney? What do you mean by that? All the contracts they have for Star Wars were, were, were struck before Disney bought. No. It was after it was after Disney bought them, about four years ago. God, has it been that long already? Three, three or four years, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But Disney's uh, one who, who sold them the license for the exclusivity. Okay. So another specifically a Star Wars mobile, mobile game. Game. Yeah, specifically, I, yes. I, I didn't even realize that there was already a mobile one out there. Yeah, I'm, yeah well, Galaxy like, Heroes. I have no idea. Is Galaxy Heroes by the same developer? It's it's both by EA. EA. I don't know about the, EA. but the, the, it's EA published. I don't know about the developer though. Got it. Okay, okay. So EA is mm. going to publish another Star Wars game, mobile Star Wars game. Mobile, yes. Okay. This is outside of Respawn's game and whatever happens to the now EA Vancouver Star Wars game. I'm I'm going to support this. I'm going to support this because I was reading. <laughs> <laughs> and, you were and reading? I was reading. I was reading stuffs on the internet, so I'm gonna go with this. I'm not. Okay. I, I, I can see EA ripping out some new content like on PC or console, but on mobile, I just don't think it's there. I don't think it's worth their time. I supported everything last year, so uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to support anything this year. Apparently, no, I'm not on. I'm not on board, especially not for 2018. Yeah, um, I mean they're too busy, you know, like fucking Star Wars. Uh, uh, their their current yeah their Micro current venture. Okay. Uh, and then some. Um, yeah, I I say no. You got one yes, says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Garrett's Kier, so really optimistic, and I think he's a fool for it. But you know what? <laughs> Teach his own. It's a free country. Last time I checked, so you know if you want to be wrong, be wrong. Or it correct. worked for him last year with Fallout VR. So yeah, you know what? That that is true. He did pull that one out. Well, you know, <laughs> lightning can't strike twice in the same place, right? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, likely prediction. This this is a rather safe bet, but if if you watched my predictions from last year regarding Nintendo, this will be a little bit more comical than anything. And, the, and my prediction is is that Nintendo will easily pass the 14 million sales in its one year mark 
that's currently set revised and set for itself. So mm. I'm going to say it's going to easily blow past 14 million, probably into at least 15, if not 16 million. This is by its birthday. And so this is specifically Switch sales? But specifically Switch sales coming out on its, on its one year, which would be March something. So so hold on. So okay, so you're you're predicting on its one year at in March. Okay. All right. Yep. On its one year in March, because they, they, they originally were hoping for ten. Now they revised to fourteen. And I'm thinking that's that's still low balling it. I think they're easily going to I, I I think this Christmas is going to definitely give them a big punch uh for their sales and that, that this is going to easily be a, a, an easy marker for them. So it won't be any problem at all. And and I'll I'll even add to that. That just to make sure that they hit that mark and go over it, they're going to spring something new uh, near its birthday for some oh. new pack, some new combo. Okay. Whether it's whether it's you know day glow fluorescent pink controllers or, or a software some other title? weirdness. Yeah, it, it, there's going to be some new pack oh, out. Probably that's some gonna po- Pokemon to, to or buy something. Some someone's going to get those last few stragglers to buy in. I'll support you on this. I am I am totally on board with this. Shock of shock. Totally on board with this. Cause they they did announce at E3, uh was it this past E3? Yeah, that they're working on a Pokemon game and I could easily see them busting their ass to get that ready for their one year anniversary on the Switch. Yep. You said this has to be done by the one year. Uh, by the one year. Linz, you there? Yeah. Okay. My frame, my picture stopped. Yeah, it looks like you're frozen on my end, too. Yep. She is, oh. She's my triple <laughs> static image. Okay. That's okay. I'm still recording. We'll wait for you. Well, there gee. You there you are. <laughs> so what uh, were you well, saying, Zez? Um, you said it had to be done by the one year. So if they were to push Pokemon out at the one year, I don't think that that would impact the sales at all. I'm yeah. gonna have to. I'm going to have to go against it. Okay. All right. So Zez doesn't support that. I mean, that also goes by the fact I was seeing. I was looking up how much the Xbox One and the PS4 sold year one as well. Mm-hmm. And PS4 is fastest selling at eighteen point four million. Xbox One had half of that. So and Switch is tearing through the the milestones pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. but by March, I don't know. Hi. Oh, I think I lost Linz again. Pick. <laughs> So that, we, we, we I still want to get my uh, I still want to get Linz here. Agree or disagree with me? By March, they will. Nintendo oh, will. Oh, disagree. Pass. Oh, disagree. Disagree. Dis- disagree. <laughs> Linz is like, fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> totally going yeah. against the grain here. By in January, I still disagree. <laughs> yeah, especially by March. I mean, I you know, Mar- March window- 2019 maybe. The, the window is kind of small. Just to sell what five million? I don't know what they're at right now. Coming into holiday season, all the sales. Oh yeah, holiday season for that thing, it's gonna fly off the shelves. Yeah, I'm gonna warp totally on this. The only hindrance to them would be supply chain, and supposedly they've got that under control. Right. I I don't know. They, I don't know. They've had seven months of steady rollout supply so far. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. So last on the list for our, our safe predictions is going to be Lens. Yeah, I didn't go with games this year at all. Uh, I'm Teledildonics. Huh? Teledildonics. It's it's not uh, it's not Teledildonics either. It's um <laughs> it's platform based. Okay. I, uh, yeah, I think that Patreon, the the Patreon that we all know and love, is going to deplatform several uh, large creators this year. Ooh. Yeah, I think it's going to start with Dick Masterson and possibly Asterios Kokonos. And I don't know if anybody knows those names or not, but no. those will be, I think, uh, okay. uh, the first couple. So, And then you, I think they're going to... Can so you, you give you, me you, like an example? Pre- they're going to so actually look at people as being too... Too controversial. Ah. Yeah. So I they're... think they're going to go the way of Twitter and just start banning everything that's controversial. So now they've gotten to a point where they've got everyone coming to them because of Adpocalypse. Right, right. And, and this is what's going to set it power. off. 
What's going to set it off is they've already uh, given a warning to Mr. Dick Masterson because his satire is a little offensive. He is the writer of Men Are Better Than Women, which is hilarious. Um, and he does the uh, he does the Dick Show podcast. So there is now a twenty million dollar lawsuit filed against this guy, Dick, um, and Asterios and several other friends of the show. But also the lawsuit names Patreon. Oh, for uh, yeah, specifically for allowing Dick to be on their platform. By the way, Dick Masterson has a twenty two thousand dollar a month Patreon. He is one of the absolute top creators, but they won't list him in any top 10 lists or anything like that because he's a little too controversial to put in their promo now, hold stuff. hold on a goddamn second. <laughs> First of all, how, who is suing them for what? Uh, so the guy suing them is a guy named, uh, you might recognize this one, Maddox. Maddox. That's that he first is one. the original king of satire on the internet from way back in the 90s. Uh, and he's gone soft in his in his uh, in his old age. But uh, Maddox <laughs> and this guy, Maddox and this guy Dick, uh, had, had a podcast together for a couple of years. Went south because of some issues <clears throat> that they had between each other, and they both separated off and did their own podcasts. And of course, there's a big um, controversy between the two podcasts, between the two fan bases, and it's kind of escalated into this this. Uh, we're going to make fun of each other. We're going to call each other cucks. Our fans are all going to fight. Uh, and now I'm going to sue you for $20 million. Okay, so, but, but how can you drag Patreon into this? Because either this <laughs> is valid and they're going to dump his ass to save themselves or it's right. invalid. They're not going to care. It's so completely invalid. It's uh, it's absolute bullshit. I think that it stems from the fact that I think Maddox is still making less than five grand a month on Patreon. And Dick is up to 22K. Oh and Maddox is the original star. So he's, you know, he's supposed Maddox to be the big guy. So he's just yes, trying to get the even. Dick's got a bigger dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. So, uh, you know, by Patreon supporting this, they're taking, uh, you know, funds and sponsorships away from Maddox and the Madcast Media Network. And, yeah, there's it's, – it's, it's a really deep controversy. But my prediction is that not only – is Patreon going to say, okay, well, regardless of the outcome of the suit, we don't want to be associated with Dick anymore. They're also going to start deplatforming other controversial so, so creators on their platform. Yeah, so this is going to affect other people on their platform. So just yeah. like, you know, my videos for super hot VR were flagged as inappropriate for advertising because <laughs> someone else right. is video actually is inappropriate. <laughs> Right, yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to go with agreeing on this one because yeah. I, I'm going to agree with this as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really feels like Patreon's hitting that critical mass now. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it definitely. We're at a point now where Patreon is the clear leader in this uh, this kind of tip jar support type system. Right, and they're definitely at a point where they are going to have to actually start whether they are legally accountable for shit like this morally and publicly just in, in, in the vision of of people is going to be liable because, oh my God, you support so-and-so and he's a, a KKK member or whatever. Right. They're going to have to make the decision that every everyone else is making, which is the choice between uh, actually supporting people who are creating things or um, being politically correct. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with this. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I I don't agree with it. Um, I don't think by the end of next year that it'll hit the majority of the creators that quickly is where I disagree with it at. Um, I don't think it's going to be a situation like the sexual harassment issues going on right now. So I don't think it's going to hit like that. So I don't think it's going to happen by the end of 2018. Yes, so I, 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 I completely disagree just because especially the thing going on with YouTube right now and people flooding to Patreon, they have – they have the power to, to go ahead and make some calls that may be unpleasant or unkind in, in people's eyes and be able to kind of justify and get away with it because all eyes are on other people or the whole everybody else is doing it too kind of mentality. Yeah. So they're not going to stand out making the decision. So now is the time to do it if there's any inkling to. Patreon doesn't seem, from everything I know, Patreon doesn't react quickly to things like that. 
So. I haven't seen Patreon do much of anything as yet, other than just exactly know, print money. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's up until this point. That's actually correct. Uh, what I base it on is the fact that Patreon actually has already warned Dick, um, simply based on a complaint from Maddox that said, "Hey, this this guy's fans are harassing me. He's a bad dude." So, and Patreon looked into it and talked, to, contacted Dick personally because, of course, he's a he's a high earner on their site. Right. So. They reached out to him personally and basically were like, hey, man, you don't make you tell your fans to stop attacking Maddox. <laughs> no, I, I think that, I think they'll take the step and approach him. But it's the it's the whole it, con- it's cracking out on the majority of controversial of bleeding out uh, on everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think it'll, I don't have I don't think it'll, I don't, my issues happening that quickly. So, well, if they go like if this is what you said, it's like 20 million dollar lawsuit, right? Mm-hmm. If this right. goes and then it, and it it hurts Patreon, then I can easily see it. Patreon going, whoa, whoa, wait a second, we got to cover our yeah, butts but that's, here. That's so, why I yeah. asked what the legitimacy was to sue Patreon for this kind of crap because that's just like, oh, it's a bullshit suit all yeah, around, yeah. no doubt. All right, okay. So we 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 we've got a few people on board. One person is saying hell no. So there you go. <laughs> All right, guys, that is our likely predictions. So we're going to take a quick break here. We'll come back with our stretch predictions yeah. in just a minute. <laughs> okay, guys, welcome back. It's Kirok here, and this time, being the first episode of the year, this is not a game releases. This is the most anticipated games of 2018. There's a few, so let's get right into it, guys. All right, guys, so your first highly anticipated game is Far Cry 5. This is a first-person shooter, and this game is something where they kind of deal with a really touchy subject, religious-slash-cultist theme, and it gets twisted and demented, kind of dark. But in direct contrast of that, the actual world you play in is brightly colored, vivid colors all throughout. It's really actually very beautiful. And you get to play as uh, one of a handful of, of heroes. And your your job as one of the heroes is to basically, you know, rid the town of this oppression, this tyranny that exists. Really, really cool concept. And your next most anticipated game for 2018 is A Way Out. This is a multiplayer adventure, and I seriously think that this is going to be a sleeper hit. This game has all the makings of a good game. It's got story, because it's it, you have to go through it with story being the primary thing. And what really makes this special is it's intended to be played as a multiplayer game. So you and your buddy play it together and it does one of those, remember the old TV show 24? It does one of those split screen type things where you see what's happening with each person playing each character. Really, really cool. And you better believe when this game comes out, guys, I'm going to be playing this and I might even be streaming it. Uh, Nacho, can we stream it? All right, guys, and your next game, most anticipated for 2018, is Anthem. Anthem is a massive multiplayer online. Now, this game, well, let's just say, step aside, Destiny. This is this is the game to go to. If you like online play, then this is the game you'd want to get in 2018. Uh, the graphics are beautiful. There's lush vegetation everywhere. It's, it's amazing. Like, the weapon effects are stunning. Um, Personally, it's not the kind of game that I would line up for. I knew right away the moment I saw it, it wasn't up my alley. But uh, of all the games I've seen like this, Destiny being one of them, it has definitely piqued my interest more than Destiny did itself. The only thing I gotta say is I'm really hoping EA doesn't fuck this up. Please, EA, don't fuck it up. No loot boxes, none of that shit. Please, please, please don't fuck it up. All right, and your next most anticipated game for 2018 is Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. This is a role-playing game in the classic sense. I remember when Nino Kuni 1 came out, it was a beautiful, colorful game. Had a lot of character, a lot of charisma. Really, really enjoyed watching other people stream it. Well, this game's no slouch either. It's going to be right up there with it, but it will be hard to top. If you like colorful, classic RPG-style type games, then this game is right up your alley, guys. Uh, personally, I prefer to watch this kind of gameplay. I'm not the greatest at playing them, so that's why I watch it. And another game, and this one is very highly anticipated, Red Dead Redemption 2, guys. It is an adventure, simulation slash western. Uh, guys, I am super ecstatic about this game. Red Dead Redemption, I played that game to death. And um, it's got probably one of the best animations 
uh, I've ever seen in any game, especially when you're like riding a horse. The horse animations is over the top. Uh, the second one is a prequel. That's been confirmed. So this is the story of John Marston. You get to learn what makes John Marston John Marston. You get to see a very bad, bad man in the very wild, wild west. Guys, all I have to say is Rockstar, Nintendo Switch, please, Nintendo Switch. And your last most highly anticipated game for 2018 is The Last of Us 2. That's right, guys. This is a dystopian action-adventure type uh, game. The first one was the best. I've played it. I've played it twice. I played the remaster version when they released it. I even streamed that sucker. This game is top notch. My favorite thing about any video game, as you know, is story. And if you want story, this game has those highs and lows and just gut-wrenching situations that it puts you through because of the actual things that are going on. It is a great game. I cannot wait for this game. I, I'll tell you right now, guys, this is Game of the Year 2018. Prediction on the first day of the year, it is it's going to be uh, Game of the Year 2018. Trust me on it. And that's it. There you have it, guys. Yeah, it wasn't a game releases episode, but it was a peek into the future of 2018. The games that are most highly anticipated to come out. Games that look fucking amazing. Guys, I can't wait to play some of those games. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. All right, guys, we are in to the second half. This means our stretch prediction. Yeah, so yeah. Follow, following in, in, in the standardized rules of Catan, the person who picked last in the first round gets to go first in the second round. So that's going to be Lens. Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Lens starts off here. What is your stretch prediction for 2018? Okay, so I'm kind of um, – I'm actually kind of hoping – that this happens, though it may not. Uh, I think we will get a definitive announcement on the follow-up game to uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is rumored to be called Shadow of Tomb Raider. Really? So, yeah, yeah. There's some whisperings. Yeah. Um, some potential <clears throat> art has been leaked, but not confirmed. Oh. Somebody uh, spying were... on the subway laptop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they were completely absent from E3 2017 which was unexpected, but there is a Tomb Raider movie coming out in 2018 that will no doubt suck, but that's not my prediction. Uh, my prediction is that they will announce... Announce, yeah. <laughs> perhaps Shadow of the Tomb Raider or whatever they decide to call it. Rise of the Tomb Raider was actually surprisingly good. Okay, I so thought. You're not talking about game actually coming out. You're talking about there'll be some official statement... Of the next song. Right, right, right. Not just a, hey, we're doing it, but hey, here's a loose timeline. Which game did you say you liked? Rise of the Tomb right. Raider. Okay. Was, I, have was it. I haven't yeah. played it yet. I'm yeah, going to stream that. It, it's, it's good. Um, just, oh, I'm a tangent. It's, I, I think it's good. I think the first one is better story-wise, but Rise is better gameplay. Got it. Yeah, okay. yeah. It, the story was weaker, but the mechanics I was were... I mean, they were they were really smooth. It was fun. It was it was it was a much tighter game as yes. being a full game. Those yeah. are, I, those I fell out of that genre. I, like honestly, the, the last Tomb Raider I played, I think, was on the PS One. Oh wow, Dreamcast. I don't know. Somewhere around <laughs> back then. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm really a diehard fan of of the series. I just happen to, you know. Well, that's play. A, that's a general genre. I I watched Kirok play. Um, what Uncharted? What's that? Yeah, Uncharted. It it it's a fun thing to watch, but I just I can't get into it. Oh, I, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm actually honestly gonna have to abstain from this one because I just I really have no horse in this race. <laughs> oh, you're abstaining completely. You no no up no down. Wow, I, I, that's I, our I that's our first. I, uh... I can't confidently get on board with this because I just don't know the the. Yeah. I haven't followed suit on this gotcha, thing. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, I Laura Croft to me has always been either Angelina Jolie or you know, pixelated pointy tits. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about, I, that's about as much as I know about it. I didn't even know that there was another game in the works. Uh, I knew about the movie. I knew about the movie when they got the new girl. I don't even remember her name. Well, I, I, I think Alicia the McCann. idea here is it, if it actually is in the works. That's that, That's the point. Right. So <laughs> this is why, okay, I get it. So this is why it's a stretch, right? Right, right. And that uh, the movie's slated to come out in 2018, which would make sense to kind of make it the game come out at the same time. 
It definitely. I don't think they're going to release at the same time because the movie's coming out in like March. Yeah, okay. I think it's and March. And we haven't heard. Yeah, so there's no way that the game is going to actually. You release know, they would have had all kinds of commercials on. on oh TV yeah, and stuff like yeah. That. Well, they try to run the games right around the same time as the movies to take advantage of it. Though. But hold on, Linz, you're not saying it'll be at the time of the movie. You're saying it'll be in 2018. So you'll have basically till the end of 2018. Right, then, right. Like, now the, yeah, yeah some announcement. Thing they'll announce. Announcement, announcement. Yeah, the official okay. announcement, not the not the rumors that we've been hearing. Yep. I want to yep. say no, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'm going to support Again, that. I'm not terribly shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to say yes as well. So. Okay. But I, 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 I do think the movie will be good, though. So I'm, I'm, I'm on a different stance on that anyway. I don't know. There's no Angelina. Okay. I would make a side note for that and see if you're right. Just the D cup or bigger. I don't think it's gonna be. Any good. I mean, uh... <laughs> see, I, I'm the type. I don't. I don't think her body affects the, the interest in that movie. So. Oh my god! You fucking kiss up. <laughs> I like small boobs. I don't know. Uh... I. I was. <laughs> we just silence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, um, wait, wait, hang on. Okay, one more thing. As long as the movie's got that Indi- Indiana Jones esque as sense of adventure, I'm good with it. You know what I mean? A good story. I don't care what she looks like. It could be Harrison Ford for all I care. I, I think it's. I think it's kind of going to be re- be a retelling of the first Tomb Raider reboot. But... Oh, okay. Anyways, <laughs> warped. So I'm next up on the list here. I'll get mine out of the way now. This mm-hmm. is I. I, I'll try my best to to not be so broad. This is kind of a broad thing, though. And, and my my prediction is in 2018 we will have our first official, actual, real AI scare. Oh, what I mean by that is no no more joking around. Like, oh, I for one welcome our new AI overlords. Ha ha ha. I mean, something's going to happen. Whether it's an AI system running a car out of control on public streets. Or doing some action that, you know, fucks things up, potentially launches a rocket that should be launched, etc. Something's going to happen that's going to make people go, oh, 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 oh. Is, 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 Tell us learning is actually a thing and it can actually get out of hand. Is, is the car, is it going to be like a car that gets into an accident with another parked car like, like an and transforms an Optimus Prime or something? No, no, no. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty goddamn sure if the car transformed in the middle of Manhattan, that nobody's gonna give a shit about me being right on this prediction. <laughs> but hey, that, that would be your AI, right? Now, <laughs> yeah, technically, it would, but I don't think we're gonna have that that much technology in hand. But there's, there's definitely something that's gonna make everybody kind of step and go, "Oh, wait a minute," and actually be legitimately surprised and a little bit worried about what AI can do. I, I don't see that. I don't see that happening. Like myself, so. I, no, uh, I'm. I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna say this is gonna be my first disagree. I think. <laughs> I'm gonna say 2018 is too soon. Unless, right. unless of course they have AI programming itself. AI programming. AI programming. AI. Then it can happen really fast. <laughs> that yes, that was a problem to me in that sense. But that said, just just to give you a little a little back on here, we we talked about um, just uh, last year. Um, Google being the best Go players, yeah, with their AI learning, oh, yes, and that was AlphaGo. Now, AlphaGo was a trained AI. We gave it knowledge by showing it past games to teach what it has done and everything else. And just a month or two ago, that AI got blown out of the water by uh, it was. It was it was a. It was Google's uh, uh, Go something. I know. I know. What, I know what name you're going for. I just can't remember it myself. Learned a zero taught AI. They gave the AI the rules to the game, and that was it. Yeah. And the game played itself over and over again, and learned from its own mistakes, and slowly taught itself how to play Go from the ground up without any human intervention. In addition to that. There was the whole little snafu with Facebook, Facebook. play with an AI. They started. Yeah, they made their own language. In its own shorthand language, 
And again, this wasn't really a scare. It was just okay. It's it, we didn't we didn't set a parameter to say speak English, you motherfucker. <laughs> this, this is America, goddammit. it! Speak English. <laughs> but it wasn't anything that was a scare. It was just oh, AI is learning. But I'm saying is we're getting to a point now where we've already started using this type of AI to do certain processes, like be able to uh, identify certain medical conditions already with with decent accuracy. And there's going to be something that's going to happen that's AI related that's going to shock people and and make them a little bit worried, like oh shit, this is a real deal. I gotcha. As so it, as attractive as that sounds, I'm still going to say no. It's too early. All right. Liz? Yeah, I I kind of tend to agree with Kirok. I think it's I think it's just a little bit too soon. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all gonna look right fucking silly <laughs> <laughs> when, when it goes down. On bunk was broadcasting a satellite. <laughs> and Zaz, you said no. Yep, I said no. All right, okay. All right, next up is Zaz. Okay, mine I guess is. Two or four part, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, I think we will get release dates for both. Um, what's it called? What's it? Last of Us Part Two and um, Days Gone. We'll get release dates for both of those. Release and events. yes, release, release dates. dates. Yes. Okay. And um, in addition to. GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption will both be in the top top 10 selling games next year. Red Dead Redemption and what? Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption 2, 2 and, and, GTA, and GTA 5. Will be uh, top top 10? Top, top 10. 10. Well, both of them, yes. Because, you know, GTA 5 is still a top 10 game selling game this year. Really? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, you add Red Dead Redemption 2 on top of that. And it's the same studio too. Yes, I I also think that if anything, more Red Dead Redemption Two would actually cannibalize the sales of uh, GTA Five. So I'm going to say no. Right. I, I think this year it's going to fall off. It's supposed to be unlikely, right? Yeah, unlikely. Yeah, that's true. It is supposed to be I, unlikely. I agree with every part of what you said, except for the GTA Five part. <laughs> that that might just be my own bias of me being a little bit tired of the game after yeah. having played it for so many years at this point. But it... <laughs> yeah, I I agree with all parts except GTA Five. I think I think kind of uh, I see the scenario that Warp mentioned that Red Dead Redemption Two will kind of cannibalize the sales of yeah. GTA Five. Yeah, all eighty five million sales. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least enough of them to not get out of the top ten. Saturation at some point. I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna agree wholeheartedly. Why? Because uh, Red Dead Red Dead's gonna kill, and I think yes. it may cannibalize a bit of the GTA Five. But I think GTA Five's got a huge following, so I don't think it's gonna. If it hurts it, I don't think it's gonna hurt it that much. Yeah, and, I, and and for sure, they're gonna re- they're gonna announce release dates for those other two games that you mentioned. So, that's mine. Hello? Well, that leaves yeah. just you, Kirok. Oh, yeah. All right. Wait for that one. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. I'm curious about this one. <laughs> it's, it's a stretch. It's unlikely. But I, I, it could. In the realm of possibility, there may be a chance. <laughs> so, I'm going to read this as I wrote it before. Um, so, <laughs> <of it>. <laughs> no. This, this year, I didn't go with anything sexual. Unless the, jo- unless the vibrating not, Joy-Cons. Like, I know. I'm a little oh, bit blown away. I mean, they're, they're I mean, HD unless... Feedback. Sorry, go if, ahead. You know, if it's AI sex dolls <laughs> that, that go wrong and start <laughs> murdering people, then we will have gone sexual. That, that's right. But... You're right. 100%. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so extra oh, bonus for Lynch. She's got that right. <laughs> so for holiday season 2018, <laughs> Nintendo's going to have the Nintendo Switch Pro available. <laughs> it will be a very a similar, fo- very similar form factor with uh, 4K, 4K output to the TV, but 1080p full on the screen. Okay, and uh, sorry, 
Why, why, why would this? Why would you not have 4K output to the screen and 4 4K handheld? Because right now it's 720. So the logical next step is is 1080, not not. Uh, so and and they can get around putting it to the TV because the base is not going to be an empty piece of plastic. It's going to be a booster, like basically a right. card, right? That that boosts it for your television to 4K. Okay, you are officially smoking penguins. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no polar bears. <laughs> Uh, let me see what else I wrote. Uh, it'll be, yeah, 1920 by 1080 screen, better graphics on the TV, 4K with enhan enhanced with the dock, exactly what I was saying, and better battery life and backwards compatibility to the games for the, P uh, for the PS. <laughs> I guess. For the I, I, yes. I, I wow. agree with the backwards <laughs> No. To the, to the backwards compatibility, yes. To, to the <laughs> Nintendo Switch games. So it'll basically be a Nintendo Switch Pro for holiday season. I want 4K original Mario. Uh, uh, 4K <laughs> original Mario. So, uh, and a little, a little add-on, little side note. If they'll sell the dock separately, that does 4K for the 1080p device. But if you use it with the old original, it will also bump it up. It'll, it'll bump it up on a TV to yeah, 4K, yeah, 4K, because you can already <laughs> bump up to 1080 on a TV. So okay, this this is an easy gimme. No, you're no. wrong. <laughs> but it's far fetched. I will take my points now. <laughs> why, why should we get it? Why, why should we get it partially right? Okay. Okay. So I don't. I don't months. see a pro. I don't Zay, see a pro by by Zay 2018. Says. <laughs> I, I don't see by 2018, and I think if they were to do it, they would do the, They would do everything 4K. Everything 4K. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's it's basically three no's. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, I I know good about you didn't think you were getting any yeses on that. <laughs> I, I, you, you say Switch, he gets a chubby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Nintendo fanboy. I just really uh, like uh, them. Uh, uh huh. So now you got your nose and something else growing. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that that is a big fat round of hell nose from everybody kirok is obviously on crack and that actually concludes our stretch predictions so we'll see how things go and of course guys we certainly do want to hear your guys's predictions as well so do us a favor and down in the comments below go ahead and give us your predictions and you are welcome to uh just Throw out there whatever you want out there, or you can make a very specific note of this is a likely prediction or unlikely prediction. And hell, we'll even go ahead and throw you on the roster for uh, for next season to uh, be a, a impromptu uh, point getter for our uh, our tally. Um, and if you happen to want to be on the show, let me know. <laughs> See how <laughs> you on to the show with us. Anyways, guys, we're gonna wrap it up, and we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, guys, you've done, gone, and done it. You've used up another hour of time sitting with the best dang gaming podcast, so says 9 out of 10 predictions. Uh, we do appreciate your time with us, as always, and we certainly do appreciate uh, the people who join us for this for this shit show that we do every year, especially <laughs> with our predictions. Um, to start us off here, Zez, um, it's been a little while, man, but I'm glad to have you back on. What's going on in your little world? Uh same old streaming on Twitch, streaming on the uh, BRG yep. Twitch channel. Oh, Kira, yeah, Kira was in was in the last one. Yeah, I was playing, I know, uh, I know. playing Batman. Yeah, very cool. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you Twitch, you're on BRG. There you go. Of course, guys, definitely make sure you go over to Twitch and check them out there, and make sure you follow and all that good jazz. And uh, you actually do peruse through uh, Discord once in a while, so you can always find them there. And uh, on the other side of the of, of the hall, so to speak, we've got our, our beautiful, illustrious leader of BRG, Linz. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I don't do anything on YouTube anymore, mm. nor nor <laughs> do I use Twatter, nor do I use anything else. But, I, but what I do is uh, I run I run BRG, uh, and you can find us at BottleRocketGaming.com, of course. Um, and actually, when this airs, we will have just finished a month of holiday giveaways and you and missed out on yeah. it so ah. and you missed it unless, unless you unless you didn't uh, um but if you if you if you didn't know about it then that means you missed out so um i'm gonna do them of course all the time uh and that's part of what our patreon helps me do 
uh, people give us money on Patreon, and then I just give it right back to the members. So, um, yeah, pretty cool stuff going on. I like laund- money laundering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bar rockers, a respectable group that don't ever drop. You give me money today, and I'll let you lose a contest tomorrow. Perfect. Yay. That, that, that's half the deal twice the price. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, uh, Kirok, my friend. Yes. Always there, always by my side. We've gone through another another, uh, another calendar year yeah. of this menagerie. <laughs> That's awesome. You you you've got you've got your YouTube channel. Yeah. You've got your Twitch channel. Yeah. But you do lots of fun stuff on it. And guys, again, if you ha- if you aren't following him on those two places, you really should be because that's good stuff. And then of course, you also have in addition to this show, you have the Hop Along Games. Yeah, couch, couch which co-op. Is- Couch Go Off, which is another uh, another channel you guys should definitely be watching and following. It's a lot of fun there. And uh, um, it's great. Yeah, it, it, there's no two bits about it. Um, I myself, guys, as you know, I, I'm hit and miss on getting content out from my channel. Um, that said, Kirok is highly interested in doing uh, some some new content with me in the form of uh, playing an MMO together. Oh God. Actually posting stuff onto our channel. I could just hear the yells now. (laughs) So that's going to be coming up. It's going to be fun. Enjoy seeing that. uh, Another, another quality shit show brought to you by gear rock and warped. (laughs) And of course, as always guys, if you really want to keep up with me and what I am doing, it's all about BRG for me right now. So please, please, please make sure you, uh, you hit up the uh, YouTube channel and hit subscribe button. Cause not only will you see every episode of the podcast comes out when it comes out, but also the new content that's coming out on this wonderful channel. We talked about this in our hundredth episode beginning of December, but we do have a couple of new shows coming now it's going to be inside the game of mind that will actually be coming out very very soon after this one uh as well as a new show for a uh, round table discussion which is going to be going live on twitch and then coming to youtube after the fact um so you'll be able to catch one way or the other live or uh live or recorded and uh definitely do that if you can so check all that out and of course as always if you want to keep up with me head on over to our discord channel it's just ball rocket gaming on discord and you can find me there and yell and say hi and all that good stuff. And if you want to throw money at us, again, we do have a Patreon account. We haven't been dropped by Patreon as of yet. Although, <laughs> you guys got to get dropped by MPS, to be honest. But yeah, hey. it's so controversial, yeah. <laughs> Platformed. <laughs> so throw money at us while you can, because they're one of the few elite people that could do that. Um, but again, it really does help us out. It gives us the opportunity to do a lot of fun stuff, so we do appreciate it. So thank you very much. So come, play, share, have fun, and uh, fuck, here's to a new year. Hey. Bye, Bye. guys.